Syringe decriminalization means that in Louisiana we have paraphernalia laws. And you can, if you're caught with a syringe, certain kind, which is usually a, a diabetic syringe, if you're caught with a pack or if you're caught with one, they make the assumption that you have dope on your presence or you're finna go get the dope. So they either, they either stop you just as you pull up to the curb to get your stuff or either as you drive away, they actually stop you and they charge you with paraphernalia. Um, even though the syringe is clean. Um, so they know that you are about to get loaded at some point in time. So for decriminalization, that would mean for there to be some type of actual modification in the paraphernalia laws in the state of Louisiana, which is a whole nother fight. Truly a whole nother fight. Because you know, of, of, of course, they uh, it's 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 people's ideas that people who do drugs are the worst people in the world. But then people that drink aren't that bad. But people who do drugs are the worst people in the world. You can have 50 million DWIs, but you're not as bad as the person that shoots dope and even killed somebody with your DUI. But you you are not as bad as the person that does dope. It's, 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 it's the way people think about it. It's actually the way they frame it to make sense to themselves. Not that, that it, it's not supposed to make sense to me, it's just supposed to make sense to them. Do you have anything to say about syringe decriminalization? Um, not really, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a good thing if it can pass. You know, it's a battle in South Carolina to even bring that to the top because of people's certain morals and the values are we're in the Bible Belt and you know I would like to see it come about but you know it's, it's an uphill battle in the state of South Carolina. They always ask me um, really if you give somebody a, a syringe that means they're gonna start using. I said darling long before they get a syringe they have used some drugs. People don't usually start with heroin. They start with smoking cigarettes or drinking all the alcohol that's legal. So, you know, so it's, it's the, the syringe stuff really has nothing to do with anything. The Southeast uh, lags behind, and it's a clear connection, I think, for anyone even vaguely paying attention that all of the new HIV, 45% of the HIV cases are here in, in the southeast and directly connected to the lack of, of syringe access and the lack of care. Um, decriminalizing syringe exchange would allow programs to provide syringes, which are actually six cents a piece, um, but more importantly send an important message around health care and the value of every resident of the state. And I think our Georgia paraphernalia law is making people sick and killing them. So I would love to see some syringe decriminalization. I would love to see that law did away with. Um, or some uh, harm reduction exceptions to that law so that we can legally save lives. And, and um, there are people who are afraid to, to work with us because we deal with those nasty old illegal sounding syringes. Uh, I know we've missed out on funding opportunities and collaboration opportunities because people are scared of the syringes. Um, so I think uh, the decriminalization idea is a good idea. I have sort of a unique kind of take on this. I work with on projects in uh, North Car or not in North Carolina in New York City and I also have worked in projects in, in California. Um, in California it's completely decriminalized the projects I worked on in California was during the process about 10 years ago as the state was moving in um, to provide funding to ensure that everyone in California had access to clean needles because it was so clear that lack of access was directly related to HIV. So 10 years ago, the state of California was actively working to, uh, to fund syringe exchange. He, New York City funds syringe exchange, the state of Massachusetts funds syringe exchange. Um, other areas around the country do. The issues around decriminalization here in North Carolina are no different than other states um, in the southeast where not only is there a lack of state funding, 
for syringe exchange, there's a lack of legality for syringe exchange. The law actually states, uh, that is OGCA 16-13-32, it's illegal to lend, lease, buy, sell, exchange, or otherwise distribute a hypodermic needle or syringe. Uh, the law goes on to state a defense. Um, you can lend, lease, exchange, whatever those syringes if you're doing it for a legitimate medical purpose. Um, I'm staking my life, my freedom, my career, uh, AHARC's reputation and standing on that legitimate medical purpose that uh, trying to stop the spread of HIV, viral hepatitis, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and other blood-borne pathogens, diseases, that, um, that that's a legitimate medical purpose. The fact that syringe exchange, you know, is a known and proven method of reducing HIV and yet it's so, uh, its implementation is so limited in the United States is just an outrage and it's unacceptable and it's a violation of human rights.